Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Today we will continue our lecture on topic 4, Basic Macroeconomic Relationships. In this video, we will look at the relationship between interest rate and investment. Recall that investments are spending on new plants, machines, and equipment. The investment decision is to weigh the marginal benefit against the marginal cost of the investment. Marginal benefit is the expected rate of returns from the investment that the business hope to realize, whereas marginal cost is the interest rate that business must pay to borrow money. Businesses will invest in all sorts of investments for which expected rate of return exceeds the interest rate. In other words, expected returns or profits and the interest rate are the main determinants of investment spending. Generally, in making investment decisions, an investment will be undertaken when it is profitable and will not be undertaken if it is not profitable. It is important to note that this rate of return is expected, not guaranteed. The investment may or may not generate as much revenue or profit as anticipated, as investments involve risks. The firm would invest to the point where expected rate of return can at least cover the cost of borrowing or the real interest rate. The real interest rate is important in making investment decisions instead of nominal interest rate because real interest rate adjusts for inflation and gives the real rate of the loan. Let's take a look at an example. Assume that this is total demand for investment goods by the entire business sector. Also assume that every firm has estimated the expected rates of return from all investment projects and has recorded those data. The investment demand curve is constructed by arraying all potential investment projects in descending order of their expected rates of return. The curve of the investment demand curve slopes downward. This reflects a negative or inverse relationship between real interest rate and the quantity of investment demanded. As you know, interest rate is the cost of borrowing. So the lower the interest rate, the more money will be borrowed to fund investments, and thus the quantity of investment demanded will be higher, and vice versa. For each rate of return, we add the amounts of investments that will yield that particular rate of return or higher. For example, if the rate of return is 10%, this means there are $15 billion worth of investment opportunities that will yield an expected rate of return of 10% or more. That $15 billion includes the $5 billion of investment expected to yield a rate of return of 14% or more, plus the $5 billion of investment expected to yield between 12 and 14%, and plus the $5 billion of investment expected to yield between 10 and 12%. In this example, it tells that a firm will undertake an investment project whose expected rate of return, or R, exceeds the real interest rate, or I. Suppose interest rate is 10%. Businesses will undertake all investments for which R exceeds 10%. That is, they will invest until the 10% of return equals the 10% interest rate. The table shows that $15 billion worth of investment spending will be undertaken at a 10% interest rate. In other words, $15 billion of investment projects have an expected rate of return of 10% or more. As mentioned before, the main determinant of investment spending is the expected rate of return and real interest rate. Any changes in those rates will cause a movement along the investment demand curve. However, when other things change, the investment demand curve will shift. Generally, any factor that leads businesses to expect greater rates of return on their investments will increase investment demand. An increase in investment demand will shift the curve to the right, while a decrease in investment demand will shift it to the left. These other determinants of investment spending are as follows. Acquisition, maintenance, and operating costs. The initial costs of acquiring, operating, and maintaining capital goods affect the expected rate of return on investment. Higher costs lower the expected return, so investment demand curve will shift to the left and vice versa. 
business taxes. If taxes increase, the cost of investment increase, causing expected profit to fall and the investment demand curve will shift to the left. Technology. Technological change often involves lower costs, which would increase expected returns and thus investment demand curve will shift to the right. Stock of capital goods on hand. Stock of capital goods on hand will affect new investment. If there is an abundant or idle capital on hand because of weak demand or recent investment, new investments would be less profitable. When there is an excess production capacity, the incentive to invest will fall. In contrast, when there is shortage production capacity, the incentive to invest will rise. Expectation. Most capital goods are durable in that they last for a long time. Thus, expectations about future economic and political conditions, both in the aggregate and in certain specific markets, can change the view of expected profits. They are based on forecasts of business conditions, such as changes in political climate, population growth, and consumer tastes. If businesses become optimistic about future sales, costs, and profits, the investment demand curve will shift to the right. In contrast, a pessimistic business outlook will shift the investment demand curve to the left. Unlike consumption, investment is unstable. In fact, investment is the most volatile component of total spending, so much so that most fluctuations in output and employment results from demand shocks relating to unexpected changes in investment. So, although consumption may be the largest component of the GDP, the variations and volatility in investment cause it to be given special attention by policymakers. The instability of investments are largely due to Durability of capital goods. Capital goods have indefinite, useful lives. Thus, purchases can usually be postponed. Optimism about the future may prompt firms to replace their older equipment. A less optimistic view, however, may lead to smaller amounts of investment as firms repair their older equipment. Irregularity of innovation. New products and processes stimulate investment. Major innovations spur waves of investment spending. However, they do not occur all the time, and this adds to the volatility of investment. Variability of profits. High current profits often generate optimism about future profitability of new investments, whereas low current profits or losses cause considerable doubt of new investments. So this contributes to the volatility of investments. Variability of expectations. Business expectations can change quickly when some event suggests a significant possible change in future business conditions. For example, changes in exchange rates, in trade barriers, and in government policies. All of this may substantially shift business expectations.